Very well, welcome everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. Thought it would be good to have a an update regarding the Pakistan Super League. We've seen a number of matches already played in Multan and Karachi, and it's been a very interesting tournament. Some hard-fought matches, some close matches, and some impressive cricket from a number of the teams. So if we're looking at it team by team so far, where else to start apart from Multan Sultan, who have been absolutely fantastic. After losing the first game, people might have thought, well, are they going to be that same standard that we've seen in previous tournaments? Or are they going to slip away? Well, they've answered that question by winning four games in a row. So currently they stand at the top of the table on eight points and looking very comfortable. Yes, they've had home advantage, but I think their strength is their all-round game. They've got match-winning bowlers in uh, Osman, uh, in um, Osama Amir, in Isanullah. They've got two excellent bowlers there who have shown their pedigree already at the Pakistan Super League. And Mohamed Rizwan, what a player. What can be said about him? He just keeps on performing. He keeps on answering those critics with his performances match after match. Today's match, he made a fantastic 100. He's been consistent. He's led the team. He's calm. He never panics. And you can see that the team really want to play for him and support him. In Andy Flower, they've got a great coach. Riley Russo is there. He's been in great form as well. So, all in all, Multan Sultans, as I said, they've had home advantage and they've played a number of games at home already. Um, but they look the outstanding team and the team to beat. Moving on to Lahore Glunders. Always love watching Lahore Glunders bowl. Um, there's something special about their bowling lineup, especially now with Rashid Khan there. You know, Harry Strauf hasn't been at his best this tournament, but if he starts clicking, that enhances that Lahore Glunders bowling lineup even more. In Zaman Khan, they've got an unorthodox pace bowler who can take wickets, he can bowl well at the death. And Shaheen Shafi, the I think a lot of us were worried about his fitness levels, what he would be like when he was back after his, his injury, his long-term layoff. But he's just gone in there and he's um, he's just performed match after match. So they're fantastic to watch when they're bowling. The batting, though, is definitely their weak suit. Fakhar Zaman is there. They've got the youngster, uh, Big, at the top of the order as well. But um, I just wonder if Fakhar Zaman fails... Have they got that strength in depth in that middle order and um, around the other batsmen that whether they can actually perform, uh, especially if, that's, if they are struggling and um, chasing a big total. So I think they need to up their game in terms of their battling. But yeah, they'll be there or thereabouts. I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll make the top four. And then once you reach that top four, it's just um, knockout really, isn't it? A couple of games and uh, you're in the final and then anything can happen. But that was only, yeah, Babar Azam. He's uh, moved to the, the new team, moving away from Karachi Kings. Looks well, looks like he's settled into that new team, working very well with um, Darren Sammy. Jimmy Neesham has uh, looked good. You know, the overseas players are the guys who've really been performing. Uh, Roman Powell, uh, Cola Cadmore have performed in games as well. So, you know, that strength is there. They've, they've got a, a pretty strong lineup. What really excites me about Peshawar Zulmi is though the, the young partners they've got around Barbara Azam. They've got Saim Ayub, who looks a fantastic batsman. Yeah, he's young, a little bit raw, but yeah, you know, he's stylish. He's got those shots, so I hope that he has a, a good tournament. Mohamed Harris as well, at that top of the order there. Uh, we could keep a batsman, another exciting product uh, of the Pakistan Super League. And somebody who I hope it doesn't go the way of some of the other batsmen that we've seen over the years in Pakistan cricket who have the talent, who have the shots, but you know, time and again, they throw their wickets away. I don't want to see Muhammad Harris coming in and scoring 10 off 5 or 19 off 8 balls. I want to see him scoring those 30s, those 40s, those 50s. You know, those scores that hurt the opposition. 10, 15 runs at 200 strike rate doesn't hurt the opposition. So I want to see Harris playing those slightly longer innings, building his innings and not throwing his wicket away. If he can do that, if Sam you can perform around Barbarazm, then Peshawar Zulmi look like um, it could be a force. Islamabad United, 
difficult to say, really. They've only played two games so far in this uh, home and away um, structure that they've got regarding the, the fixtures. So in those two games, yeah, you know what you're going to get with Islamabad United, well-organised, um, hard-hitting, aggressive team. And uh, with a number of all-rounders in Fahim Ashraf, they've got uh, Mohamed Osim Jr. there, etc. So, yeah, it's that tried and tested formula that Islamabad have. With Alex Hales and their Afghanistan players now joining them, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. They look much stronger now. They've got more players to um, to choose from. And in Azam Khan, they've got somebody who's very strong against spin. So, yeah, again, another team that you'd expect to reach the top four, whether they can win it, it all depends on, as I say, the the, the form of the likes of Alex Hales, etc. So let's see how how they uh, progress in that tournament. Now coming to Quetta Gladiators, yeah, um, one one lost three so far. Uh, Nova Richards, no Hasaranga, which Safar Ahmed isn't happy about. Look, Mohammed Asnan, Nasim Shah two of the finest Pakistani bowlers out there at the moment. Great products. However, they need runs on the board. Those bowlers aren't going to bowl teams out if you've not got runs on the board. That is the problem at the moment. Jason Roy hasn't fired yet. He, he performed in one match. Guptal's performed in one match. But you can't keep on relying on those guys if the guys performed in one match. But collectively, uh, Quetta Gladiators haven't performed. They've had individuals do well in some of their matches, but as I say, as a unit, that batting unit hasn't fired. I just wonder whether they know or that planning, that structure is actually there because they've been shuffling that batting order around. They've been moving players up and down. So far as Amad has batted in four different positions already, batted at number eight the other day, which um, was a, a total shock. Uh, yeah, they've got players missing. And as I say, Viv Richards isn't there to to mentor the team, but that shouldn't be an excuse. You've got to get on with it. You've got to win those games. They're struggling. And if they don't start winning, they're going to find themselves at that bottom of the table and then one of the first teams knocked out. Now, moving to Karachi Kings. Ah, yeah, deep breath. Um, you know, I um, have sympathies with those Karachi fans because they are loyal to their team. They want their team to do well, but after the loss today, what is it? 1-1 one, one lost for five games at home, so the remaining games are all away. That is going to be tough. It might have seen has to be one of the big positives of the whole tournament, really. Brilliant with the ball. He's been fantastic with the bat, where people have criticised his batting, but he's answered those critics already. You know, Batting at a wonderful strike rate, he's taking wickets. Bowling at a good economy rate. However, that support's just not there, is it? Yeah, you get the odd performance. Heather at least performed in one game. Sajil Khan has been dropped. He's been out of form. Um, Mohamed Am is there um, with the ball. He's injured as well. So there's a lot of things going wrong at Karachi Kings at the moment. I just wonder whether their recruitment of their overseas players was right because a number of their overseas players have uh, struggled for form. They've gone for the experienced look with the likes of Cutting, Imran Tahir, Andrew Tai. Um, yeah, these guys could on their day, but are they at their prime? You want players who are at the top of the game, not those who've performed in the past, especially with those overseas slots. You've got four slots there, and um, it's going to be difficult. Maybe they uh, need to get uh, the Braz Shamshi in the side, one of the top T20 bowlers. And also the batting, I mean, you can't keep on relying on him either seam match after match to score those runs. Yeah, Shweb Malik has, has sort of looked okay, but he's not been at the top of his game. Um, James Vince, fantastic, can't doubt him. He was brilliant against Mokdan Sultan, but they need his runs, they need his performances, but you know, you, you just can't keep on relying on him either seam and James Vince to perform. You need the other guys around them. Karachi are in big trouble. Five games left. They're probably going to have to win all five of those games. Have they got it in them to win five games away from home? It's a tough ask, but anything is possible with Karachi. They are very unpredictable and um, 
you know, it's one of those units that uh, if they get a run of games, run of wins going, then uh, anything is, is possible, really. So but it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough for them. Uh, yeah, a lot of positives. The crowds have been decent, especially in Multan. We've seen some good close games, some good youngsters um, who have who've shown. You know, Isanullah and, um, as I said, Saima Yu and uh, Mohamed Harris have shown some promise as well. Um, so good signs, early stages of the tournament. Um, you've got to mention a couple of the negatives as well. I just think the overrates need to improve in the Pakistan Super League. Time and again, you're seeing teams being penalised where they have to bring that extra fielder into the circle towards the end of the innings because their overrates are too slow. Yeah, there's drinks breaks, but everybody's just chilling, you know, having a chat. And um, surely the coaching staff, I've got to inform the captains on the field that, come on, hurry up, we haven't got all night. And, uh, you know, these matches are taking four hours, some of them, which is absolutely ridiculous. T20, the whole point of it is people want to come in, watch the game and, and be out of there quickly. These games are going on forever. So these overrates really need to be improved. And I'd like to see the uh, PCB um, start finding teams uh, for slow overrates. And the other thing I've been disappointed in is the standard of fielding. Oh, there's been some simple catches dropped, some horrible misfields. But there again, you see some brilliant catches as well. Uh, from Niazi, we've seen a couple of brilliant catches uh, for Karachi Kings. But seeing some of these young guys coming in and they haven't got the basics of fielding right. They don't know how to dive. They don't know how to stop the ball. They're dropping catches. And then... On top of that, you're seeing some of the experienced guys who've been playing domestic cricket for a number of years, and um, their standard of fielding is awful as well. So I think this is an area in Pakistan cricket, not just the PSL, where Pakistan really do need to work on the fielding because time and again, you're seeing opposition teams saving runs, um, changing the course of game to a brilliant piece of fielding, a brilliant run out, a great catch or um, a great um, stop or a dive in the field. Uh, but in Pakistan cricket, we rarely see that. So really need to uh, see some improvements there. So, yeah, so far, great tournament. We'll dance and dance, looking top of that pile and the team to beat. Thank you very much for watching. Look out for the next video coming up.